All right, so uh, hello everyone and welcome to the Fisher College Online Accepted Students Day event. Uh, my name is Sean Franks and I'm one of the Assistant Directors of Admissions here at the college. Um, today various staff members and I will go over different aspects of the college including topics such as admissions, uh, housing, athletics, and student life. Um, I would encourage any of today's viewers to visit the college at some point if they have not already. Um, but for those who haven't, this will be a great introduction to life at Fisher. So without further ado, let's begin. Um, starting off, Fisher College is a private, not-for-profit institution. We are located in Boston's Back Bay next to both the Public Garden and Boston Common for those who are not familiar with the area. Um, we are a very small school, rounding out at around 900 total students. Um, to break down the student body, about 52% of the student body is female and 46% are male. Um, and one thing that this college definitely does is use its small size to its, its, its advantage. Um, our classes are small, with usually no more than 18 students in a class. So this allows us to do um, some of the things that some of the bigger schools can't in, to, in terms of st uh, student attention. So um, one thing that this allows us to do is create enhanced relationships with professors. Um, you know, professors are really kind of an underutilized uh, resource that, you know, most college students don't use. But it's important to realize that a lot of the professors here at Fisher have uh, outside work experience. So they can really kind of, you know, hook you up with different networking opportunities after college. Um, so it definitely it's a, it's a good resource uh, to use while you're at school. Um, and it allows for classes to become more of a group discussion rather than a typical lecture, which at some bigger schools and in class, in class sizes that, you know, tend to be more than 30 students, classes end up being lectures more so often. Um, and this also allows other offices to, to cater to students' needs, such as the ACE program, the tutoring center, and career services as well. Um, so being a small school uh, also allows our student support to extend beyond the classroom, like I was saying, into career services. Uh, the career service office in particular is a multifunctional office designed to help students while they are in school as well as after graduation. Um, some of the many things career services assist in on a daily basis would be finding students work study jobs. So really any office uh, at Fisher has the capability for uh, work study jobs. So, you know, I represent admissions. We have work study students here, but also financial aid, um, the bursar's office, the registrar, uh, the library even. So if your major kind of um, you know, relates to a job on campus, it, it might be a good idea to, you know, to make some money and to be able to have that work experience coming out. Um, <clears throat> another thing that they do is finding students jobs in and around the city. So if you wanted to work uh, and gain um, experience in a restaurant or a hotel or once again anything that relates to your major, it's, it's something that career services can really um, help you do. So another thing they also do is assist students in getting internships in and around the city. So um, I will touch on this a little bit later on in the presentation, but anybody who um, does participate in a bachelor's degree program at Fisher has to complete an internship. So that's something that career services as well as your advisor will help you do. Um, and then career services does a lot of other kind of smaller things such as they can conduct mock interviews to prepare you for <clears throat> when you go into the workforce and you have to actually go on a real interview as well as they have job market ready workshops. So what I mean by that is, for instance, you know, some students don't know how to dress professionally, so they can help with that, things like that. Um, but I, I highly suggest in becoming close to the career service team early on in your college career so that they can help you out as much as possible. There's different stages, you know, each and every year that you are here at the college, so um, it's important to, you know, to listen to them as they've been through it before. But kind of moving uh, away from career services, let's talk about some of the majors that we offer at the college. <clears throat> so picking a major is sometimes difficult to freshmen. Um, you know, a lot of students come in as undeclared. Some students come in with a major, but believe it or not, 50% of freshman students eventually change their major anyways. So um, that is kind of something that you're able to do with a lot of flexibility at Fisher and not lose uh, stride with your courses. So. Some of the programs that we do offer um, range everywhere from business, criminal justice, uh, psychology, communications, human services, early childhood education, and a nursing program as well. 
Um, the most popular program that we have on campus is the business program, and this is mainly because it splits off into 12 different concentrations. So some of these concentrations would include accounting, uh, fashion merchandising, hospitality and tourism, um, healthcare, marketing, and sports management, just to name a few. Like I said, there are 12. Um, and all this information can also be found on the website as well. You know, if, there, if there's something that um, me and, and my um, coworkers are missing. Um, but like I said before, I was going to touch back on some of the internship requirements. So <clears throat> for any bachelor's degree, you do have to complete an internship, as I said before. Now there's two different options in which you can complete an internship. There is a typical 120 hour three credit option um, in which you'll be taking a semi-normal course load of, of four additional classes and this in internship will be for a semester so you'll have to do some sort of report on it at the end and a lot of our students are finding <clears throat> work opportunities through their internship so it's very important to find you know an internship that you think will suit your needs and it is really related to what you want to do <clears throat> once you graduate the college um, 96 percent of our students currently are either working in their field of choice or have returned to school. So that's really our main mission as a college, um, you know, to get you either working or to kind of propel you to the next level uh, in an educational setting. Um, the other internship option that we have at the college is a 12 credit uh, option, similar to Northeastern's co-op program, which is probably the most popular example um, you know, on this side of the state when it comes to that internship. That's basically an internship where you would be working on site and for the most part it's like a full-time job. You're not really taking any other classes and that's really kind of your main focus. Um, the students who have participated in that program over the last few years have a 100% job turnover rate, which means that they're getting offered work right from their internship. So we really recommend doing that um, your senior year if you are interested in that. Uh, and that's something that your advisor would be able to help you with later on. Um, <clears throat> but moving on from academics and majors, I, I do want to talk about some of the things that you can do uh, outside the classroom. So one thing is going to be study abroad. So study abroad is a really popular thing that many students are taking advantage of. It allows you to obviously travel and, and go to another country and, and study at the same time. So um, some of the locations that we currently offer, uh, we offer locations that are spanning through Europe, Asia, Australia, South America, and New Zealand. Um, a full list can be found online or with some of our, our mailing brochures that we, that we mail to a lot of students. Um, and we also offer something called Semester at Sea, which is a really popular program as well. This is a program that we use um, the University of Virginia through. And basically, you're on a ship for about five months or so, depending on your voyage, and you can travel the world. So it's definitely something that I recommend doing some research on ahead of time. Um, if you go into Google and just search Semester at Sea, you'll find all the information that, that you do need for that. Um, but aside from study abroad, the college does offer many clubs and organizations to take advantage of. Currently, we have uh, over 60. So for our small size, that, that's a good amount. Um, one of the nice things about Fisher and its size is that we, we cater to students. So if you wanted to, to start a club or if we didn't have something you know that you were interested in, all you, do, all you need is some student support and an approval and you can really start anything that you want on campus. So it's definitely nice to have a voice and, and a lot of students at Fisher find that they do. Um, now I know this presentation is for mainly accepted students, but if there are any viewers who, you know, are just watching and are just interested in the college, <clears throat> I am going to go over a few of the things that we do require to get the admissions process started. Um, so to say the least, Fisher College has a very student-friendly application process. So first, you're going to want to fill out the free application online, and our website is www.fisher.edu. Um, then for anybody graduating high school, we are just going to require you to send over your high school transcript <clears throat> and also either SAT scores or ACT scores if you are interested in a bachelor's degree program. Um, and they don't need to be official. If, you, if you're looking for a quick decision, we don't like to sit on many applications here at the office. We do things in, in a timely manner and we, you know, we'll reach out to you individually. So if you want to fax over or just send a, a copy, that's fine for now. Um, for anybody who is going to be transferring from a college, the, the requirements are a little bit different just because you're treated like a transfer student. So um, the requirements that we, we have students uh, bring to us 
in that situation would be we would need any transcript that you have from any type of college that you've been to. Um, and then we also would require your high school transcript, but we it, it's test optional at that point, so you don't have to send SAT or ACT scores. <clears throat> um, and for a high school student, we are looking at a GPA around a 2, 5, and above. Uh, we can go lower, obviously, <clears throat> you know, we are looking for that above mark, but, um, you know, we do look to see what you've been involved in as a student. So, obviously, if you've been in athletics, you've done community service or participated in, in other things to kind of enhance that resume, we do take that into consideration. Um, for test scores for an ACT, we are looking for a minimum of a 20, but like I said, you know, we can go a little bit lower. Uh, depending on you know what you've been involved in and for SATs same thing we're looking for an 1000 combined score we don't look at the writing section so that's just reading and math <clears throat> and you know like the other requirements we can go a little bit lower depending on what you've been a part of so um, those are the requirements so it, it is pretty student friendly um, and also I didn't mention this the application is completely free online so even if you're thinking of Fisher um, you know, fill it out. You have nothing to lose. So next, I do want to touch on financial aid. So for accepted students at this point, hopefully you've filled out the FAFSA. Um, the FAFSA stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Um, it's the tool that our financial aid office uses to award you a financial aid award package. So um, every student who's accepted to the college receives two different types of financial aid. So the first one is merit-based, which is completely based off of the grades that you're bringing us from high school. Um, transfer students, if you are accepted into the college, there's a, a set scholarship that all transfers do receive. Um, and then there is the second type of uh, aid, which is need-based aid, and that's completely based off of the FAFSA. Um, one of the most um, reoccurring things that we hear in the office is a lot of parents and students feel like when they fill out the FAFSA they won't receive anything. We do highly recommend filling this out because you are also, a, uh, it makes you eligible for different grants that we offer. Um, we don't offer normally if you don't fill out the FAFSA. So it is a good idea. And I will say the average resident student um, coming from out of state and in state is, is getting a significant amount of financial aid. I think the average this year is about 26,000. So that, that helps out a lot. Um, and, and then we can work with you from there. Um, but total cost without any financial aid of the college currently, uh, tuition is around 26000 and housing is around 14000 So when everything's all said and done, um, usually the, the price tag without financial aid, once again, is going to be around 42000 But, you know, obviously with financial aid, that, that lowers significantly. Um, but that's that's a lot of the, the admission side of things and a pretty good introduction to um, the college as a whole. So what I'm going to do right now is grab uh, Nicole, who's going to talk to you about housing. So I'll be right back. Hi there, I'm Nicole. I'm representing housing. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about housing. And if you have any questions, we can ask at the end. Um, so here at Fisher, a little bit different from um, the other schools. Um, we do have guaranteed housing for all four years that you're here. Um, we have singles, doubles, triples, and quads. The single room is $1,000 extra per semester, um, and the doubles are $500 extra per semester. Um, we have both all-girls dorms as well as co-ed. Um, what that means um, is the all-girls we have um, strictly for the, for the ladies, and the co-ed are both um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, unfortunately, we don't have all male dorms, um, but there are more ladies than there are gentlemen. Um, for the bathrooms, we're a little bit different as well. We don't have the, sh the shower stalls like a lot of schools do. Um, I like to call them home bathrooms. Um, so there is a tub and a sink and a vanity in, the, in every bathroom. Um, you won't be sharing any up to, you won't be sharing a lot of with a lot of different people in your hallway. Um, the most in the dorms is about seven people. Um, each room comes with, for each student, um, a bed, a mattress, a dresser, a desk, a chair, um, and either a freestanding closet or um, a built-in closet to the room. Um, a lot of the rooms are already equipped with um, the walk-in closets, which are really nice. Um, our dorms are located right on Beacon Street where the classrooms are here, um, and they are or furbished um, brownstone buildings. 
Um, so it's a little bit of a treat for everyone. Let's see. Um, we do have bathrooms both in and out of the rooms. Um, if the bathroom is inside of your student's room um, or your room, then you will be responsible to clean it. If it's on the outside of your room, we do have cleaners that come Monday through Friday every day to clean it for you, which is great to know um, for incoming students that they have to bring cleaning supplies or not. Um, unfortunately, we do have strict fire codes because we are in Back Bay. Um, it's a thickly settled area. Um, so there is no microwaves or fridges with separate freezer freezers in them um, that are allowed in the dorms um, and no other cooking appliances. So no Keurigs, coffee pots, quesadilla makers, things like that. Um, there is a kitchen in each of the buildings um, so you will be able to have access to that um, after hours when the cap is closed. Um, there's also a full list of what not to bring, um, what you can bring um, up on the website in case you have any questions about that. Um, all of the residents as well as commuters have a access to the health services office. The health service office is staffed with a nurse practitioner that's there Monday through Friday from 8 to 4. Um, so she can write prescriptions for um, the simple things like um, just a common cold, if you have the flu, um, something like that, or strep throat's a big one. Um, so she is able for that. If there's any other urgent issues, we are a 10 minute walk um, across the street to MGH. So there's always there's a walking clinic there as well as an emergency room. Um, our location, like I said, we're right on Beacon Street. Um, we our backyard is the Charles River with the hat shell. Um, so it's a it's a definite plus for runners because um, it's beautiful to run over there um, in the springtime um, as well as the fall. Um, we have Fenway, which is a 20 minute walk from us, as well as the North End and Fenway Hall is about 25 to 30 minute walk. Copley Square is a five to 10 minute walk. Um, there's about three Starbucks within three to five minute walking distance from us. Um, and I know a lot of people love to know about the food plan here. Um, so all residents are required to have a meal plan once they arrive on campus. Um, we do subcontract to Aramark Dining Services for our food plans and each student is um, granted an allowance of $1,150 per semester. Um, you'll, when you come to Fisher, you'll have a student ID and that student ID is preloaded with that amount. Um, and how it works when you go into the cafeteria, it will work as a, um, a declining balance. Um, it looks like we have a question. Um, for the commuters, um, the tuition is about $27,000. Um, for residents, it's an extra um, $14,700. Um, but for commuters, about 27265 20, I mean, um, And the exact numbers can be found um, on the website as well. Um, back to the dining plan. Um, the dining plan, um, so you get $1,150 a semester with a declining balance um, on your student ID. The balance does roll over from semester to semester, um, so from that fall semester to the spring semester. Um, however, it doesn't roll over from year to year, so spring into fall. Um, if you do have a remaining balance on your card, um, you're able to um, buy a bunch of cases of water or snacks, so you don't lose it on that money. Um, and if you end up running out towards the end of the semester or the end of the year, you are able to reload your card with extra money in $50 increments. Um, that's very easy to do in case you run out. Um, so the last thing I wanted to mention is that housing is on a first come first serve basis. Um, so in order to ensure that you're getting um, the first choice of your housing, um, we suggest that you have your, your housing deposit of $500 um, in as soon as possible. Um, and that deposit is refundable up until May 30. May 1st, sorry. Um, so you need to have um, everything in. And if you decide that you change your mind about Fisher, you can get it back up to April 30th. And May 1st would be the day that we would start um, declining the refunds for the deposits. Um, if you have any questions at all, we'd be happy to answer it at the end. Um, and let me grab um, Chris, who's one of our student testimonials. Hold on just a moment. Hello, good evening everyone. Uh, like Nicole said, my name is Chris. Uh, I'm a senior on campus here at Fisher. I'm from Dallas, Texas. I study business marketing. Um, I've been here all four years, never transferred, uh, never thought about transferring. Uh, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about uh, my time here and uh, what it's meant to me and how it's kind of impacted my life. Um, I know Sean talked to you a little bit about 
um, the internships and the uh, class sizes and stuff like that. But that's one of the, ma the main advantages of uh, Fisher and what it really brings to the table. Uh, when I came here uh, from Dallas as a freshman, I was, um, you know, kind of lost a little bit. I'm in a new city. Uh, my class sizes in Dallas were upwards of 80 students, and uh, the class sizes here at Fisher are about 15 students. Uh, it's a very nice change and uh, something that you will learn um, to benefit from. Uh, the teachers are very um, up close and personal with you throughout your time during class. And, um, you know, you really grow to like that, and, you know, it's hard to fail here as well. Uh, as far as an internship aspect, um, like I keep saying, I'm from Dallas, and um, they were generous enough to let me do my internship back in Dallas over the summer, and um, that's definitely prepared me for the uh, workforce. Um, I, I graduate in about 30 days, May 10th, and um, as soon as I finish the second that I land, in Dallas, I can call the employer that I interned with, and my full-time job starts at that point. So uh, job security definitely comes out of internships, and that's what we all are looking for uh, when we are students in college. Um, the student life is great here. I'm a commuter myself. I live off campus in an apartment close to school. Um, so if any of those commuters out there that are listening right now, please ask those questions while I'm on so I can answer those. Um, but uh, I never had a meal plan. Um, I never... I never really um, did any of that. I played basketball on campus all four years, um, so I was very active with the athletics department and uh, carrying out uh, those activities. But um, you know, I was very involved um, in the honors program. I'm a work study on campus here in the admissions office, so um, I suggest all of you students out there to get involved on campus. So that way, you can see yourself succeed. Um, it's like we have a question: How's your relationship with your teachers? Uh, my relationship was great. Uh, like I said, they're going to be up and personal with you. It's not going to be, um, you're never going to feel lost in the classroom. Um, I get more emails from my professors than I send out. Um, just follow-ups, check-up emails. Um, you know, your relationship is going to be one that's very personable and um, going to require a lot of communication. Uh, the classroom setting here is very discussion-based. And what that means is basically teachers are going to require you to speak during class so that way they understand that you're retaining the information. And um, that's really going to help you succeed uh, in the long run. It's really going to um, help you out when you're trying to recall that information and kind of help out in the, uh, in the workforce one day. Um, but like I said, I played basketball all four years. Um, I, I loved it. It's a great way to get involved. Um, it's a great way to keep me active. Um, but other than that, Fisher is a great place to be. It's going to be sad for me to leave. Um, I going out there to start working, but you know, college is a great place to be. It's a great campus to be. Nice and nice and small campus uh, with just you know eight to ten buildings that are all basically connected, and uh, that's basically our campus. But the beautiful Boston area, uh, as long as put together with all the other benefits that come out of Fisher, makes it a great place to be. Uh, thank you guys for listening, and I'm going to grab another student to give you another aspect of the college, and uh, her name is Lulu, so just give me a second. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Lutania Brooks, but everybody here calls me Lulu. Uh, so I am a resident student. I am a third year student. This is my junior year. Uh, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I do... I, I'm a part of everything, a little bit of everything here at Fisher. Um, I cheer. I I was I did a couple of the acting shows that they that they did in the past. I I, I was part of the dance team. I, I did Habitat for Humanity. So anybody who's interested in that, definitely ask about it um, because it was it's a great experience. I do, I've done it for the last two years. Um, I am a resident student, so if you have any questions about that, I am also I can also answer some of those questions. I've had every room that you can imagine from I have a single currently, I've had a double in the past, and I've also had a quad as well. Um, it's wonderful being a resident student because it's you you get to actually experience the city. A lot of the local students have to leave a little bit earlier, so they don't see a lot of the not nightlife, but like what really goes on here in Boston, like the, some of the great restaurants, some of the events that go on in the park. So I would I would definitely, if you can, recommend you being a resident student. 
because like I said before, a lot of the commuters have to leave at a certain time. So a lot of the things that we have on campus at around 7 or 8 o'clock at night, they can't really um, be a part of. We also have off-campus housing and those are really nice as well. So it really just depends on what type of living situation you want to be in. We have, uh, the room that I stay in is in the all-girls building, it's 24-hour quiet. We do have co-ed dorms as well. Uh, the reason, and I guess I can talk a little bit uh, now about why I chose to come to Fisher. Um, I went to a boarding school, so it was small, it was, it was private, and it was, um, it was a diverse community, so I know I wanted that out of a college. Um, I, I came here wanting just those several things, a small school that's diverse, that's in a bigger city, because the school that I previously went to was in basically, not in the middle of nowhere, but it was two and a half hours from Atlanta, so it wasn't really in the city, so I knew I wanted to be in the, a city this time around, but I got so much more than I planned on from Fisher. Um, yeah. Uh, so if you don't have any other questions, I am going to go get our next representative, and yeah, thank you. Uh, all right, hello, good evening. My name is Josh Matroni. I'm the head women's basketball coach here at Fisher College. Um, here to represent athletics and the college. Uh, currently, currently, right now, we participate in the NAIA. We are a Division II uh, program. Uh, we have men's and women's soccer, men's and women's basketball, uh, baseball softball, cheerleading, and club golf right now. Um, all of our programs are vastly improving each year. Um, specifically on the women's side, our uh, soccer team had a seven win improvement this year. Uh, women's basketball, we had an eight win improvement. Um, we finished fifth in our conference, just missing postseason play. And our softball team has won seven of the last eight. Uh, the baseball team uh, is 23 and 10. Uh, they consistently qualify for postseason. Um, men's basketball also qualified for postseason this year, finishing fourth in the conference. And men's soccer uh, did not qualify for postseason, but had a, a much better year this year, this past season, than years past. Um, on average, uh, for instance, basketball programs play 28 to 32 games a season. Uh, baseball and softball more than 35, soccer 18 to 20 games. Um, if there's any questions about athletics, I'd be happy to answer them right now while I'm here. Um, we both, all the programs travel throughout the uh, eastern seaboard of the United States. Uh, teams go to Florida and Georgia. Uh, basketball teams have gone to Maryland, Ohio, Chicago, uh, Florida, uh, the Midwest, uh, uh, soccer teams go down to Virginia, Washington, D.C. So you do get to enjoy um, the travel aspect of being a college athlete. Um, you do get a good chance to travel, see the country, spend a lot of good quality time with your teammates outside of the playing fields and the courts uh, and develop those relationships that a lot of players say that you know the travel and everything helps foster team chemistry things like that so it's a great experience not just from playing but also traveling and being a student athlete here at Fisher. Is there any questions? I'll take those. If not, then I'm going to bring Sean back in here to continue with admissions and conclude. Thank you. So hello everyone again. Um, I am back to more or less close out the presentation. Um, so this is a good point.
point to to ask any last minute questions. Um, you know, I would like to thank everyone who uh, stayed behind today to present. You know, different aspects of the college. Um, you know, and once again, I, I really do advocate for anybody who's thinking about the college to really come and visit because you know one thing you'll notice whether you've been to one school, you haven't been to any schools, or you've been to a million schools is um, each school really has its own feeling and you can really only um, you know get a sense of that when you do step on campus so I, I really recommend coming um, we're in a great part of the city for anybody who doesn't know you know Boston very well and for people who do um, you know it's a great season to come visit us so I would like to thank everybody who you know, took the time out <clears throat> tonight to, to view the webcast. Um, and once again, I'm going to stick around for a couple minutes just to see if anybody has any um, last minute questions. So now is the time to ask. And we do have one that just came in. <clears throat> so the question is when is the last day to pay for the room? So, um, good question. One of the nice things about the college is that we work on a, a rolling admissions basis. So, more or less there's there's no deadline for um, for many of the, the things that we do <clears throat> require at the college but for the last day to pay for the room um, this is more or less how housing works so there is a housing deposit and housing application to secure the room it's completely refundable up until May 1st so if I had to set a date I would say May 1st is going to be um, that date that you want to that you want to have a decision by so it's April 9th now um, we do recommend all students and parents who you know, are interested to definitely, if, if you can afford the, the housing deposit, you know, now is the time because you do have a little bit of time to, to back out if you're still deciding between other schools. Um, you know, I do also want to mention that the, the housing deposit is not an additional charge that we're charging. It's actually $500 off of the, the room and board for the year. So it's convenient because you already get a small payment out of the way. Um, also, and I can't stress this enough, Scheduling freshman classes is completely based off of when you make your housing deposit. So what I mean by that is you don't have an option to sign up for, for registration days unless you get that housing deposit in. So right now we have uh, five registration days throughout the spring and summer that students are eligible to sign up for once they get their deposit in. Um, you know, the benefit of showing up to one of the earlier registration days is you're probably going to end up with better class times. Um, you know, I tell freshmen all the time, Freshmen don't have the best schedules usually because usually you have to have, um, you know, some seniority to get some of the better class time. So it's really important to get the housing deposit in, which allows you to sign up for the registration days, which will give you the best schedule. So good question. Um, just got another question. How is your medical program? So the medical program that we have at the college, um, we have we have two main aspects. So uh, the first is the health science program. The health science program that we have at the college is actually an associate's degree program. So it's a two-year program. Um, most students who participate in the program are either going to go on to uh, another medical program at another institution or they are going to be um, going into the nursing program. So the nursing program, if that's what you you may be interested in, um, is going to move in after that first two years and then you'll be going to the Brockton School of Nursing, which we've had a relationship with for years. You'll get your RN first, and then you'll be able to get your BSN. Usually, it takes students about five years. So that's a little bit about the medical program and what it can lead to. Um, let's see, just got another question. Can you choose your own roommates? So the answer to this is yes. Uh, I know Nicole went over some housing. Just to reiterate, we have singles, doubles, triples, and quads. Doubles and singles come with an additional cost, um, but what you're going to want to do is, I know I just mentioned this with getting the housing deposit in, you're going to want to fill out your housing application. So the housing application can be found in your pre-enrollment guide in your acceptance packet that we sent in the mail. Um, you're going to go to page 17, and the, the housing application has um, preference questions, so, you know, what type of music do you like? Are you an athlete? Things like that. If you turn the page to the second sheet, there is an option to um, to put who you'd like to room with if you know someone else who's attending the college. That's where you put you know, the name of a friend or somebody that you know. Um, so that's how you can choose your own roommate. Just make sure that they also put your name on the housing application so you guys might want to communicate you know, with that before time, but housing is pretty good with setting that up. I also would recommend, and this is just to everybody's questions and supplement, 
is if you know if you do have any questions after tonight, please visit the website. There's a full list of, of contact information of all the offices on campus. Everybody checks their email here and everyone picks up the phone too. So please don't hesitate um, you know, to do that. Okay, so next question is how is your soccer team? So a little bit about athletics, which I'm, I'm sure um, Josh covered. Uh, you know, moments ago, we are NAIA Division II. Um, soccer for boys and girls is actually in a rebuilding stage. So it, it is a competitive program, but we are always looking for people um, to walk on. So it's not just a, a recruitment-based team. So, you know, if you're, if you're contemplating, you know, do I want to participate in the soccer team uh, at, you know, a college level, I definitely recommend to try out. Um, it's a great experience and you know I, I do recommend doing things outside the classroom and, and soccer is one of those things you know it's it's an instant set of friends that you're going to have um, you know when you step on campus so that's a little bit about the soccer team um, but like I was just saying before please reach out to the coach because he might want to look at you and we also have showcase events too for recruiting um, let's see the next question is how much is yearly tuition for medical school there's no difference so if, if our medical program is that health science program, tuition, room and board, all costs are going to be the same. So it, the cost doesn't rise depending on, you know, what type of program that you do pick. Um, my next question that I just received is how is your criminal justice program? I, I tell this to students all the time. There's so many schools out there that have criminal justice programs. There's so many schools out there that have business programs, psychology programs, all types of programs. I think what it comes down to is, do you see yourself here? So, do you see yourself at Fisher College in this type of environment, a small school in a big city? The criminal justice program is one of our newest programs. One of the advantages to this is it was just uh, accredited by the criminal justice board. So everything is up to date. Um, you know, the staff has have many different experiences, whether in the court system or for probation. So depending on what you want to do, they can really kind of network and help you, um, you know, potentially find an institution to, to you know, pursue your criminal justice um, career. You will have to do an internship to touch back on what I was saying earlier. So, you know, depending on what you want to do or if you don't know what you want to do, it's a great time to figure that out through the four years. Um, but the criminal justice program is also one of the most popular programs on campus, so I do recommend it. But good questions, everybody. Um, this is your chance to ask any last minute questions. Um, and I'm also always available. Uh, I can give you know my information over the webcast. So um, my name, once again, is Sean Franks. I work in the admissions office. Um, my direct line for anybody who has a pen and paper available is 617-236-5500. Um, you can contact the admissions main line at any point, 617-236-8818. Uh, um, and I will say all of the admissions staff here in the office have different regions. So, um, you know, anybody who is, you know, viewing this from Central Mass, Western Mass, New York, New Jersey, and, and most of the other um, areas outside New England, I am your admissions counselor. So... Um, this was definitely a good way to meet, but everybody else has their own admissions counselor as well, so we can pair you up with them immediately, you know, if you don't know them ahead of time. But I think that's it for the questions, guys, so I am going to end the presentation, um, and hopefully we see you all soon. All right, have a great night, everybody.